Hello, my name is Michael Kaler and I am the lab manager for the Gyme Diffraction Facility located at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. This video will cover how to use Highscore Plus to determine crystallite size and microstrain using refeld refinement. If you are unfamiliar with Highscore Plus, it may be a good idea to stop this video, watch the phase identification video first, and then return to this one. For those of you still watching, we will now look into how to determine crystallite size and microstrain. These properties are determined by the breadth of your peaks. As such, we need to first determine the broadening caused by the measurement optics before analyzing data from your sample of interest. The most common method of determining instrumental broadening is through the use of NIST standard samples, such as lanthanum hexaboride or silicon. These samples must be measured using the same exact optics as those used for your sample. I have already collected a diffraction pattern using the NIST 640E silicon standard, so the first step is to load the pattern. To do this, we will start by going to File, Open. These first two are the data files for the samples I want to analyze. Here we have the silicon standard, so we will start with the silicon standard. Here we have a very nice looking diffraction pattern. And because it's so nice, and because we know that there's just silicon in it, I will skip the first two steps that I covered in the phase identification video, namely uh, background determination and peak searching, because it's really not necessary in this case. So I will just right click, search match, edit the restriction set. If you click this little button here, it cycles all the elements through the colors. So I will change them all to none of and just choose silicon as the only possible element. And that brings us down to 155 patterns to search through. So I'll close and search, be very quick. And I'll click on the first uh, candidate and we see that the peaks, the bluish grayish lines match up nicely with our diffraction data. Even the relative intensities are pretty close. So I will left click and drag up, and then the next step is to right click and convert pattern to phase. Now we can move on to refinement control. So the first thing we want to do is go to global variables. I suggest changing the tolerance. We'll add two zeros in there. Sometimes if you have a very complicated pattern, this can be a bad thing to do, but with a simple pattern, it seems to improve the refinement. We'll also tell the computer to calculate errors. Moving on to our phase, we have the option, if we scroll down, to set an asymmetry function. So in case your peaks are a little as uh, asymmetric, if you set a function, it'll help shape them a little bit better. So we can do split width and shape. That's what I like to do. And then even though we are doing a uh, size strain analysis, for this step, we want to make sure that this says none. All we do then is that we make sure that we are in automatic mode, and then we can go to this uh, parameter set and choose size strain analysis R. It's the phase fit. We'll click that. Right click down here to show the difference plot. And we see the refinement steps that it's going through and how it's changing these R values, which are goodness of fit values, essentially. So we see that it modified some of the background terms, the lattice parameters, the uh, profile variables. And as we watch, this difference profile gets better and better, and this RWP continues to improve. So we'll just let it do its thing. It's almost done. So once we determine that we have a good fit, all we do is right click on the phase and then take as size strain standard. So the peak widths are now saved in, the, uh, in this file. And we can empty out this file, delete everything inside of it, and then kind of make a, uh, a blank file that we can then import future data into. So let's go ahead, we'll just right click Initialize global variables. That changes all the background back to zero and all the different parameters back to zero. We don't need the silicon phase anymore. 
so we can delete that phase. We'll go to the scan list and delete the scan that we imported earlier. Uh, remove scan. So now that goes away. We no longer need to deal with silicon, so we can delete this. And we shouldn't have any peaks, and we don't. So now we can go File, Save As. We want to make sure it's a high score plus file. And I will just save this as something like PF for parameter file. I will leave in all the information about the optics I used because if any of these change for future measurements, we'll have to do the same process again. So we'll save. And now we can import our first data file. So we'll just choose the regular AL203 and then file save as, and we'll just use the same name that the XRDML file had. So now we're dealing with AL203, so we will right click, search match. If you have a more complicated pattern, you can first determine background and search peaks if you like, but I already know this is AL203. So I'll edit the restriction set. Turn that back, we'll do O and AL. So that gives us 354 patterns. If we make it so that they both have to be in every search pattern, that brings it down to 199. Search. So we see aluminum oxide has a very high score. If we click it, the lines all match up beautifully. So we'll left click and drag it up to accept. We'll right click, uh, convert pattern to phase. We have the number so we know that this is a good file to use. Under refinement control, global variables, they should still be set nicely. They are. Under corundum, we want to uh, choose the same asymmetry function that we used with the silicon standard, and that is very important. You want to make sure that this matches whatever standard you used. If you chose not to have any asymmetry for your standard, you would choose no asymmetry. But I chose split width and shape, so that's what we'll go with. And this time, you do want to perform a size and strain analysis. So with that, we'll go up here, and we will just use that same phase fit size strain analysis R. Again, I will go back to the difference plot. So if we click on corundum, left click, and scroll all the way to the bottom, we see this derived data. Click the plus sign, and here we have the micro strain, the error on the micro strain, crystallite size, and then the error. So we see that we have about 0.08% micro strain and about 830 angstroms for the crystallite size. So that's pretty much it for this video. As a reminder, if you would like to learn more about using HighScore Plus, links to my other tutorials can be found in the description below. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments section. Thank you and have a great day.